is where we start kind of that lumbar spine SI joint dysfunction portion of our course. Uh, more specifically now, our objectives going forward with the spine are going to be understanding why Pilates is a successful form of exercise for stabilizing lumbar spine and SI joints. Um, learn and understand your common spinal conditions, to, uh, mostly about the lumbar spine now for this module. Um, learning contraindications and developing modifications for clients with common spinal conditions. And then also just maximize the benefits of Pilates for each individual. And minimize risk, right? We don't want to have them risking it here and we don't want to have them risking hurting themselves anywhere else either. We want them to take their chances. This is what I always tell them, look, you don't want to, yes, you can roll up and down your spine. You can probably do it 502 times, but I don't want your 503rd time to be with me here. Right? And when you're exercising, why would you risk that? You're going to have to bend your back in life. Right? Let's let you have those chances out there. Let's not exercise you in a way that could compromise you. Right? And most people get that. They, they're like, oh yeah, that's a good point. Let's not compromise it with exercise. I'm supposed to be helping myself with exercise. Um, okay, so the ones that we're going to cover are first discogenic pain. So that's, gonna, that's talking about disc protrusions, disc herniations, degenerative disc, and sciatica. And then we're going to hit spinal stenosis, which, um, and then ankylosing spondylitis. I actually took it out and put it back in. <laughs> so you're not going to see a lot of people with ankylosing spondylitis. I don't think I've ever, I've had one client with it in 12, 13 years now. So um, you're not going to see it much. So I thought, well, we don't need it in here. But then I thought, well, you should just know what it is. So we won't spend a lot of time with that one but just to give you an awareness. Um, Spondylitis, yes? I don't even know what it is. You will know what it is. Okay. We will teach you what it is, yes. So that, that's why, exactly, because yeah. So um, we'll teach you what it is. It's not that common. Um, and then spondylolisthesis we'll cover, and acute facet pain and facet osteoarthritis, and then sprain and strains of the low back. Um, oh, and then a sacroiliac is part of this module now. So we're going to talk about sacroiliac joint dysfunction as well. All right, so intake screening specifically to the low back. Um, you need to ask specifically if the client has ever had low back pain. Um, so I will um, tell you that most everybody has had something happen in their back at some point in their life, especially 40 and up, right? Um, sometimes it's a one-time thing and it really is gone. Sometimes you'll ask that question, have you ever had anything in your low back? And they'll say, um, oh, oh, well, you know, I have that once a month thing. Like, what once a month thing? Well, you know, every once a month my back catches and I'm really sore for two days and then I'm okay again. So is that a back issue? Oh, no, it's not a back issue. It's just, you know, that once a month back right. thing. So strength, strength training is very specific. And if we strengthen in flat back all the time, they may not have the strength we want them to have when they're neutral, which is life. Life is neutral. Deep abdominals, glutes, and adductors. So that brings us back. If you really activate all of those at once, that brings us back into that posterior posture. right? If I really turn on all of those, I'm going to be posterior here. Um, so that's, since we know that's not where we want to be all the time, we focus more on other muscles, also those muscles, but not to that extent. And the glute that we focus on the most now is not glute max, but medius. glute medius. Why? It keeps your hips and pelvis aligned properly, right? And keeps you from that swaggering runway model walking, right? Why is it that your deeper abdominals stabilize your spine and not like rectus? Why are we turning off rectus a lot of the time? It, rectus is too far away. It actually pulls, I think, away from the spine. Um, the deep abdominals are the closest we're gonna get.